Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the National Intel Report. I'm your host, John Statmiller. And it is Tuesday. Well, if it's Tuesday, you've come to the right place. Bob Chapman, Rami Noel, John Statmiller, uh, the three amigos. We'll be kicking things off here in just a minute on this. Let's get the date so we can have the stamp for the feds. It's the 28th of January. I'm sorry. That'll screw them up. 28th July, 2009. By the way, um, I just uh, found something out from a lawyer here in Texas. And you know my little to-do last Thursday. Well, come to find out that the DPS is converting over their system. And guess what? There's people going to jail that have valid licenses. There's people out driving that don't have valid licenses. It looks like a monumental DPS screw-up. But here's the thing. The police departments are fully aware of it. Is that stopping them? No, we're just going to go by what the computer says. I am so tired of these revenueing corporate keystone coffer cops, I could puke. I mean, it's just getting downright ridiculous. If people aren't agitated and upset enough, We've got the clowns out there running the deal. At uh, any rate, you heard that story. Uh, welcome to the program today, ladies and gentlemen. Bob Chapman, sir, are you there? I am here, and uh, I'm happy to be back. I am happy that you are back. Thank you. I missed you. Damn. And is little Robbie there? Uh, well, I'm happy you're happy. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy that my dad's happy. Should we tell? Should we tell him that? Should we tell him, Bob, that Robbie's actually my half brother from another mother? Really? <laughs> you didn't know that? That's quite spectacular. <laughs> but I never made it to Rhodesia, though. I mean, I, you know, you guys, you globe-trotting people, you never made it that far. Hey. Well, you've got the, the king of Borrowdale Road on your on your program, and uh, as your partner, and, you know, I ran into a South African today. He's lived in the states for a long time, and and it was an interesting conversation. You knew some people I knew. Hmm. Is he going home? No, no. I I think uh, he's probably going to retire in Costa Rica. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, somewhere near the beach in Guanacaste. I can't wait till Fidel dies and they open up Cuba. And I'm going to get down there and open up a gambling casino. And on the southern coast, I'm going to open up a dive shop. Some of the sounds best... like a great idea. It's a nice, it's a nice place. Uh, it's clean, and in spite of the fact that you know nothing aggressive has happened uh, since the 1960s, uh, it, it's. Uh, it's a, it's a nice place to be. Well, and they've got that Caribbean water down there, 90 miles, uh, I think it's what, 90 miles south of uh, Cuba. you got the Cayman Islands, and it's beautiful water and great for diving. Spent a lot of time there in conferences. I'll be darned. Well, hey, we got to take this break. 800-313-9443. Folks, don't wait until the second hour. We'll take your calls in the first as well. We'll be Bob, AIG unit keeps $4 billion from asset sales as taxpayers wait for payment. What's the deal there with AIG? You know, they're taking money in and they're not giving back? Well, that's exactly it. And I think eventually AIG will survive simply because they're managing congressional retirement plans Oh, they might, although they might sell that off, but they want to use the uh, offices of AIG, which are worldwide, continue to use them as fronts for uh, Central Intelligence Agency operations, because that's what they've been doing for 60, 70 years. This is, this is, this is amazing. I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I'm hard-pressed to believe uh, that there is nobody up on Capitol Hill that's even... Well, there's a few people making some rumblings, but uh, nothing is changing here. 
The credit market's still frozen. They're keeping it that way. And now I'm hearing argument from a few people in and around Washington that, well, wait a minute. This whole deal was to allow you people to free up some credit to keep the economy going, and you guys haven't done it. And that's what I said right at the outset, not that I was for the TARP bailout or anything else. But why didn't they, at the initiation of this and going, okay, we're going to give you guys billions of dollars. We want billions set aside for the credit markets. You know, we're going to help you out with the books. You know, the American people, the socialized people here in America are going to help you out. But, whoa, this is still the problem. There's no credit out there for businesses or anybody else. And here we all are sitting in la-la land while these people are taking in the billions of dollars and we're reaping nothing except longer unemployment lines. Well, they're on the edge of insolvency, if not insolvent, and the loans are being either kept, uh, that those funds, at the Fed, and they're making some money between the difference between what they're borrowing at and what they're sitting at the Fed at, at which is a scam. Like the Fed lends them money at 1%, and then they tell the Fed to keep it there, and the Fed gives them one and a half or two percent. And up until just recently, banks were not allowed to uh, receive interest on monies that they kept at the Fed, and they changed that rule. And uh, the money that sits on the books ostensibly uh, on a mark-to-model basis uh, allows them to stay solvent. But I think what's going to happen down the line is uh, somewhere down there the, uh, uh, the Congress is going to say we just can't do anymore. And uh, that's probably about a year to a year and a half away. And when that happens, uh, the, the banks will start lending. And that money will be immediately monetized into the system. And uh, inflation is just going to fly. And so I think in anticipation of that, you're going to see before the end of the year, and I think before September and October, a fall in the dollar from around uh, 78 and a half, 79 on the USDX index down to 71.18. And uh, I know some professionals think it's going to break. I really don't know, but I do know there'll be a bounce. And uh, that's where things are headed, and um, that makes interest rates go up. And it also makes gold and silver prices go up. And so I, I, that's where I think we're going to end up in the fall. And I think the stock market's going to get banged around and go right back down again. Uh, these, this rally is very similar to the one we had in 1932, although it was in three phases. This has been only in two phases. And it doesn't make any difference. It's not quite uh, as high or not quite as... Uh, strong is the rally in 32, but it, it certainly qualifies. And uh, what we're seeing now is uh, a floating market on extremely low volume. And, uh, in fact, the lowest volume since 1993. And uh, I believe that um, we're going to see dollar pressure on the downside, pressure on the market, pressure on bonds. Then they get the Japanese, uh, excuse me, the Chinese, screaming in their ears at the White House and thereabouts, uh, you know, get your economy in order. And so uh, I think we're, we've got some tough times ahead. Well, I'm looking at this market, and it's more like a dead cat bounce than anything else. I was watching the market very closely this morning. I'm sure you were as well, Robbie. Uh, they were desperately, the plunge protection team was desperately trying to keep that Dow up above 9,000, and I think they were successful. Well, They kept it there on the close. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously you had, uh, you had the auction, uh, short-term auction go off uh, really well. You had uh, a big meeting yesterday with uh, China at the White House, trying to reassure them that uh, their money was safe. And most probably, <clears throat> I don't know, it's speculation on my part, China most probably dumped its long-term treasuries, bought short terms, and uh, we had a rally in the dollar because of... Uh, even though the Case-Shiller index came out and showed another 17% decline, 
um, it was viewed as good news because it wasn't as bad as it could have been. <laughs> yeah, 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 and this, this fascinates me. Uh, there is well, a, it's a new normal. Yeah, there you go. That's where I was going with this, that they're redefining definitions, and bad isn't as bad, but it's not as good as it can be. But it was, it's, it's a little bit better than it was the day before, and it was absolutely crappy the day before. But, but we see green shoots. We see signs here. I'm looking at Bloomberg. And uh, they're just all full of confidence here. Uh, uh, Fed's yelling, seeing first solid signs of emergence from the U.S. recession. I mean, are these are these people on crack, Bob, or are they just trying to? By the way, that's your new Federal Reserve uh, chairman. 